safe. So Figma just released an amazing new features and now it actually officially supports for you to convert your designs into an actual code going from like HTML, CSS, and React. Also, they release a new AI plugin that allows you to create from SVGs, renaming layers, generating text and images, as well as a new VS Code Figma extension. So let's go ahead and see how you can use this in your AI plugin, as well as how you can turn your designs into an actual code and React components. So just a couple of days ago, Figma had held their annual conference, the Figma Config, which brought absolutely amazing new features and, and outstanding stuff that are coming to Figma from like features, acquisitions and stuff more. And especially for us developers, they have an amazing set of features, tools and extensions they bring in up for us as developers. So the first feature that we are all excited about for us like developers and designers is actually the dev mode. So Figma introduced a new mode that is called dev mode that allows you to actually to toggle between the design and the dev mode. And once you are in the dev mode, you can basically become a developer and you can see like code. So when if you select like a frame or a design or a button, it just gives you the CSS code and you can just copy paste it. And that's all of this just officially supported by Figma. And the other awesome thing that happened is Figma actually acquiring a new team called the Diagram Team to bring AI to their platform. So yes, you're hearing it right. So Figma actually just had an acquisition of the Diagram Company, which is a company that actually offers a pretty set of awesome tools and plugins for Figma that utilizes AI. So if you go to diagram.com in here, you can see basically what this one brings and their most awesome and capable plugins called Magician. And they have a lot of other amazing plugins that utilize AI to help you build better designs. All right, so let's start and explore dev mode and try to actually convert this simple design into an actual prototype that works in HTML, React, CSS, with styling, with Tailwind CSS, and see if this is actually a really great mode or not. So as currently, this is actually the standard mode or the designer mode as Figma calls it. So here you are in design, you can control the design, you can move stuff or you can edit stuff in design mode. But as soon as you go on the top right hand corner in here, you're gonna find that toggle that says dev mode. So once you just simply click that, just toggle that one, exclusively everything turns into a greenish kind of theme in Figma and it starts giving you a lot more kind of like a developer needed kind of information. So as cruising here, as soon as I click on something in here, it tells me like, oh, what is the width, the height? Um, it tells me like, it's exactly in pixels, if it's actually a text. Also it tells me in here like, you know, margins or patterns inside. There is a bunch of stuff. For example, if I click in here, because here, what I'm using, I'm using auto layout. And what I mean by auto layout in the CSS word for us as developers is simply just a flex box inside of the Figma design. So here it tells you all the information about like what is the margin, the padding in here, and you can utilize all of those. So as cruising here, as soon as I select something, for example, I select the login card on the right hand side in here, I clearly see in here, I can just maybe, you know, make that a little bit bigger for you guys so you can see it. So as clearly see, it tells me what is the actual code, but you're also gonna actually change and switch between different stuff. For example, in here, if you go to this drop down where you select the code, it can tell you here, I have already selected Tailwind GSX, but you can actually select Compose, Swift UI if you're iOS developer or CSS in here. If you select CSS, as you see in here, it just gives you all the CSS properties. As you see, it's already telling us, oh, this is an inline flex, it has some padding in here. In REM, because you can choose as well what is the actual, whether you wanna use it, pixels or something. It tells you that the alignments, the gap, basically it just gives you the full CSS. So all you gotta do, just copy paste that one. And from the parameters in here, you can select whether we want to, you know, put them this in pixels or REM in here or what you want, like a particular unit, you can set a custom one. And if you want to do React or if you want to do a custom thing with Tailwind, as you've seen me doing it right now, you can go to the drop down in here. Actually, there's a couple of plugins. There is, you know, a bunch of plugins in here. And what I tried, what works for me the best is these two plugins, Figma to Code, Auto HTML. Now, Figma to code in here, if you click on it, it actually allows you to select a plethora of stuff like going from Tailwind GSX to React GSX or HTML, or the second plugin in here, which is also pretty great. So once you select that one, as we it just takes a little bit of time to load. And there you go, it just gave us the code. But the thing in here, it doesn't give you actually Tailwind, so it's like less reliable compared to other plugins. 
But matter of fact, in here, it just gives you CSS. So you can use, you know, regular CSS if you want, or if you want Tailwind, as I, you know, as we all like web developers love that, you can just go back in here and actually use the second plugin, Tailwind GSX in here, and there you go. So it just gives you, you know, the full GSX that works in React. All the class names in here have like Tailwind stuff, and, you know, you can just explore all of those. So I can just go and top in here, copy it, and I can get back to my VS Code. So here I have like a simple React project in here that runs on Vite. And for this one, I have just a login component. So this is actually where I want to put my design. So let's go ahead and try this one. Uh, I can just go ahead and do return, return the full dev in here. Um, so as you already can basically notice that it has already some stuff that are duplicated, but that shouldn't be a problem right now. So everything is good. I can go ahead and save. And right, when I get back into this one, there you go. It just gave us the full design in here. It has the same layout. There's actually some stuff that are broken, like for example, the text in here that doesn't have the full width, but that's very easily fixable. But at least we got the same layout, the same colors, everything is put in like the same way. For example, in here for a, you know, a GitHub logo, we don't have that because you know you can't just put you a GitHub logo. So you have to go ahead and download the asset by yourself. So you have just to go put that in that into you know the design stuff. Of. You click on here, for example, you choose the GitHub logo or whatever logo you have. You can, you know, preview in here. You can just export that as JPEG or something. And you can simply import that, you know, GitHub logo on top of there. And you get back in here, for example, for the SRC. I can just choose the GitHub logo and it can just simply work like that. Of course, it's not super perfect. There is some glitches that you probably need to fix, but but eventually it all comes down to how you design it. So if you have your design in here in Figma, pretty well made, uh, for example, it uses auto layout, which is, you know, the same representation of flex layout and CSS. So if you know, if your design is pretty good, pretty well layout in here is pretty, you know, put together, it doesn't use absolute positioning, it will perfectly work. And you can even actually select standalone elements that you can convert them one by one. For example, like an input in here, it just gives you the code. Uh, for example, text in here, it just gives you the code. But one thing I noticed that I really didn't like is actually it converts everything into a div. For example, in here, an input, this should be an input, right? But it doesn't, it doesn't put that as an input. I think this is actually more of an improvement that they need to put work on. I mean, you can actually switch and change to an input once you copy paste that into your, you know, VS code, and you can just switch it into an input. But that actually beats the, you know, the idea of just converting design into code when you just have to manually go through that and actually debug it. So there's actually a couple of glitches and downsides in here, but after all, it's pretty good actually for prototyping and actually copy pasting. And the dev mode now makes our lives as, you know, designers for slash developers quite easier. The other awesome thing they released for us as developers is a really awesome VS Code Figma extension. So the extension in here allows you to view your you know, designs in here side by side with your code editor. So once you install that one and you kind of find you know, Figma in here from the left hand side, you click on it, you log in with your Figma account and you're gonna find all the projects or your like, you know, Figma designs in here, all of them, even like the ones that are shared with your team. And you can click on that. It's gonna open on the side in here so you can easily view the code and the design at the same time. And of course, this is actually by default enabling the dev mode that you see, you know, on the Figma website. That's the same thing enabled in here. As you can see, like when I hover over it or go try to see what is the text, it just gives me all the details in here down here with, you know, the different stuff and then the codes with assets. For example, I can switch that, for example, to CSS that there's one thing plugins doesn't work just yet, but they actually going to go ahead and support that in the new future. So now all you're going to have to, you know, can be able to view is actually just CSS layout in here. But I think that's good enough for most people. So I think this is actually a really good extension. So you can put it side by side and actually start working, you know, your designs the same way in here on the code editor, instead of like having it side by side with your Chrome tab or with Figma installed on your machine, something like that. I think this is more professional meant for developers kind of thing. And the extension or VS extension is a really, really nice step ahead. Now, the last thing that's actually coming in and is super exciting to Figma, it's gonna come and being developed in the next couple of weeks. And now because they require the, you know, the diagram kind of team in here, which they have been behind a really awesome extensions they released daily. And like some of these extensions are still in development and some of them are like in beta, like this magician kind of like a uh, plugin. It's not an extension, sorry. So the magician plugin in here, if you go to magician.design, you can install that right now. You can try the beta for like 21 days and you can just work with it and see how it works. So if you simply just go to plugins and here, like just search for, you know, magician, you're gonna find magician right here, click, click on it. You can click run in here and you're gonna find the tap. So once you get the type in here, you can have, you know, both of the stuff to do right now and more are coming soon. 
So it's creating a version. It's like literally the first version that was released in here with the public beta. So for example, I can try the magic icon. So here you can put whatever you want and actually you can generate for you an SVG ready icon. So let's say for the login in here, I want to generate. So let's say for the logo right here, I just want to generate like a lock sort of a drop down just to put it next to my header title in here. So for example, we can do lock. I can go in and search for that. And yes, because it's still like in beta. So they have, you know, it takes a little bit of time to load that, but I think they are working on this. And as soon if I just click on an icon, it's just going to vectorize that for us and generate that for me. And indeed, this is an actual real, like it's not an image, it's more of like an SVG. So it's a real SVG. So if you go to the color in here, color palette, and you can just change the color, like completely change the color. For example, I can just put it, you know, next to the login in here, or maybe on top, like inside of the login. I don't want to just you know, mess with that one. But this actually looks pretty good. So you got an icon in here. It's full SVG. If you click on it, it has a vector on top in here. So it's full SVG has been generated for you on the fly right into your designs with a really nice plugin. And there's actually a plethora of different features that you can try. For example, a magic copy. This allows you to generate text. So you can do, uh, you know, welcome to login page or something. And this will, you know, go ahead and just generate for you. Same thing can do with chat GPT or some that sort of like, you know, AI. But let's simply just give you like a couple of suggestions depending on the text you have. So this will just, you know, save you some time on prototyping and having different variants of stuff and texts. And there's another one like where you go and actually generate an image, you put it in here, it's just going to generate for you an image. So the same thing, you know, with all our different stuff, but there's really awesome, you know, tool in here, which is magic rename that I really like. And it just like helped me since I started using that one, which basically go ahead and renames all the layers for you. If you select, for example, I'd say have this login card, right? It has a bunch of layers and all the layers in here doesn't have a really, you know, understandable kind of clean names. So what you want to do, go ahead and select that one, you do magic rename, you click on this and it's clearly you're just gonna, you know, select a particular card or, you know, a frame, and this will go ahead and rename. So you can click on that one, and we'll go ahead and take it like a couple of seconds, they already told you that we're working to make that faster. And there you go. Now, if you notice the like the names, the layer names in here have changed, completely changed. Now they are a lot better. For example, this is heading, we have got form in here, password input, they actually generated all of that for us. So as you can see, a password form, a user icon, different things. I really, really like that one. It's, it's just like just magic, you select a frame, it just renames that for you. And I think this is super helpful for us as Figma developers, or Figma designers, particularly because we just like to put stuff and it's very hard to rename them sometime. And I'm pretty sure this tool is going to be super, super loved.